What's up, it's the Coaster Craze, and today I'm doing a park review for Kennywood in West Mifflin, Pennsylvania. So just to refresh you guys on how I do amusement park reviews, I have a bunch of different categories that the point totals, the total points you can get is 40, and then at the end, I'll divide by 4 how much points the park got, and that'll be the score out of 10, and that's me trying to be as objective as possible in terms of a well-rounded park, and then I'll also give my personal score of how much I like the park at the end of the video. So let's get right into the first category with appearance and cleanliness. Rated out of 5, I weight the categories different amounts based on how important I think they are in a park experience. Appearance and cleanliness is very important, and I think Kennywood excels at it. I'm giving it a perfect five stars. So I had no problem with cleanliness when I was there, as far as I can remember. It was just really well maintained overall. The park really, really benefits as feeling like a family run park, even though it is technically a corporate park. All of the fountains, the little statues, the landscaping was just beautiful. I wasn't expecting that. I knew there were a lot of fountains. But just how pretty the park was overall, it felt very historical, but also timeless. It was just beautiful to walk through, and there were some areas where there weren't many rides, but it was just a joy. It felt like I was in like a public park, but like a really beautiful like city public maintained park, like Boston Public Gardens or the Washington, D.C. Gardens, something like that. Really something you don't see very often with amusement parks in general. Like, and you don't even get with the highly theme parks because it distracts from the theme. So this really just felt like it took the best possibility of an amusement park's aesthetic and took it as own with these really retro signs, the beautiful gardens, just everything about it. Absolutely gorgeous to walk through. Even if you don't go on a single ride, you're just going to love walking the park. And it's pretty small. So you can see every little in and out of all the pathways if you want to. Next up is theming out of four. And like I said already, Kennywood is an amusement park, so it's going to struggle a bit in the theming category. And theming specifically is not for individual rides, but for overall areas and just the overall park in general. In terms of the theming between going on rides, are the pathways, are there little theming elements throughout the park? And yeah, it's going to be pretty weak at this. There are two exceptions, however. The kids area, which is themed to Thomas the Train Engine and his friends. That is really well themed actually. I was impressed. Even if it's mostly dedicated to the rides, it is a nice little dedicated section of theming. Because Kennywood is a park where there aren't really individual sections mostly. And so there's gonna be very little opportunities for theming in general. So it's that. And then the other one is the new for 2019, which has now been delayed a bit. The Steelers territory area, which you know Steel Curtain is the centerpiece of. When I went in 2019, only Steel Kern was open. The other parts with like the Steelers experience indoor with all the throwing and the games with the footballs and the big screens and the bar. It looked really cool in the concept art, but it was still under construction. But that area looked like it was going to be pretty coolly themed and very unique. You don't really see any theme park have a section themed to a sports team. But besides those two areas, there is really nothing else. So I still got to give it a one out of four. The next category I want to discuss is operations, which is, again, out of four points. And this is not one of Kennywood's strong suits. Lots of coasters are pretty old, so their capacities aren't great. And they don't have many coasters that have a lot of trains or are really just people eaters, like a massive B&M, per se. So there can be some seriously long lines. I went on a Sunday in August, so was expecting some long lines, and sure enough, it was pretty packed. The park, again, since it's not very large and it caters towards a fairly large city with Pittsburgh and the surrounding metropolitan area, it gets very slammed for the size that the park is. I didn't have to wait too long for any of the flat rides, thankfully, but the coasters, especially Steel Curtain and the old wooden coasters, those get some crazy lines because the capacity isn't great and the operations, frankly, weren't the best either not crazy slow but especially for steel curtain with a new coaster that was running such a long line for them to kind of have slow dispatches it was really really disappointing thankfully the best coaster in the park fam's revenge is pretty fast with operations and with those two really long trains it has a pretty good capacity and skyrocket didn't have a very long line either thankfully but especially with those wooden coasters you're waiting so long for them it really is annoying, so I'm going to have to give it only a 1 out of 4 here again. 
now I've got out of three points, employees, atmosphere, and charm. So this kind of grouped together category has some of the highs and lows of Kennywood. I already touched on some of its charm and atmosphere when I talked about appearance and boy, that really does hold true. It has a very just old fashioned, beautiful atmosphere. I love being there. It was just a very fun, exciting time, especially at night with all of those classic rides and the lights. It just really comes alive. It feels like a classic carnival, you know, open 1899 as a trolley park and definitely has a ton of charm, especially with those unique just ram fountains and gardens and is very weird, especially in that it combines this very old fashioned, you know, sensibilities with very modern attractions like you know fam's revenge skyrocket steel curtain and a couple of the other small areas but then there are other areas of the park that feel like they could have existed you know for over a hundred years and they did so it is a really weird mix and often oddities like that at amusement parks lead to great charm and that is definitely the case with kennywood however the employees are a bit detracting from that the thing with kennywood and what I was fearing is that, like a lot of other Pennsylvania parks, no shade to people that live in Pennsylvania. I know a lot of great people from there. But lots of times the parks, just the clientele and the employees, they don't have the best attitude. It's just kind of this, this nasty sensation. I don't know what it is, especially in the Philadelphia and Pittsburgh metropolitan areas. You see it with their sports fans as well. And that was definitely the case at Kennywood. It just seemed like all the employees, or at least most of them, could not care less. They were just very disinterested in their job. But there were also some really nice people and some great people that I met online that were really friendly, even if it was definitely a, just a weird mix. So, yeah, the people are uh, a little all over the place, let's just say. But the just the overall atmosphere and the charm save it so i'm still giving it a two out of three for this category now we've gotten to some of the big categories the rides categories first family and kids rides which is out of five and this is one of kennywood's strongest assets by far just the amount of kids and families rides they have especially the ones that are unique to the park are sensational most parks where i just go to and i only have one day i'll just hit up the major coasters maybe a couple big thrill rides but that's it but no nope, not at kennywood i hit up a lot of the family rides because they are so exciting and awesome so first there are a lot of kiddie rides i already talked about that thomas the tank engine section there's also a little kiddie land area where the little phantom roller coaster is and that is a really cute area just with old-fashioned kind of kids rides and it's a great contrast to the thomas area and but outside of those two areas they also have a ton of family rides of course so there's some really unique ones that are the only ones left their kind like the turtle which i absolutely loved definitely recommend if you're going to kennywood they also had auto race which i didn't do but it's the last of its kind as well there's modern popular ones like a zamperla disco they have the classics you'd hope to find at any park like a music express or a pirate ship and they also had some phenomenal ones that sadly closed down since i last went to the park which really bums me the Bayern Curve is one of them, which I didn't get to ride, but you don't see many of those, as well as Paratrooper, which is pretty rare and was super fun, and most notably Kangaroo, which is the last of its kind, one of my favorite family rides I have ever been on, and it closed down, and that is like a dagger to the heart. It's so sad, and of course, I have to rate this park on what it is like now, but even so, it still has so many great family rides still open. They have a Shoot the Shoots. They have a River Rapids. They also have a number of dark rides, which is really cool, including the walkthrough Noah's Ark, which is really wacky and super fun. Definitely recommend. It doesn't get a line because it's like a walkthrough. You got Ghostwood Estate, which unfortunately the blasters weren't working when I wrote it, but the theming and some of the special effects and how the actual scenes move as you pass them was really cool and still made for a very enjoyable shooting dark ride despite the shooting not really existing there's old mill which used to be garfield's nightmare i didn't get to ride it i heard old mill isn't that great unfortunately there's also a 40 theater so overall there's a really great variety and it's just an impressive family collection even if some of their most notable attractions closed down i'm still giving it five out of five for family and kids rides next up is thrill rides out of five so specifically ones that are not roller coasters and this is a category i expected kennywood to be really good with and i think maybe in the past that was more true but just like family rides they have sadly gotten rid of a bunch of their classics here it's volcano the enterprise which closed in 2020 along with those three family rides i mentioned 
And that only leaves actually three thrilling flat rides, and that is Swingshot, the SNS Scream and Swing, Black Widow, the Zamperla Giant Discovery, and Arrow 360, which features those classic Kennywood arrows. It's that Zamperla Hawk ride where you're in the inverted seats and you spin a full 360 degrees upside down. And I think it's more of the quality over quantity approach right now. I really do think the park needs a drop tower and a couple other modern thrilling flat rides but for what they got it's pretty spectacular but they definitely need a few more for i could say it's a really really solid collection of flat rides so i'm only giving kennywood a three out of five now we got the largest category of them all roller coasters yeah i think they're the most important part of a park thus my channel name and it's gonna be out of seven points and so kennywood has eight coasters and overall, I'd say that their collection is just above average, and that's primarily for two reasons. First, their top two coasters, and second, the uniqueness of their coasters. So I'm going to talk about their uniqueness first, and just walk through briefly the eight coasters. So first off, I have a ranking video, which I'll link in the iCard up above, of all of their coasters, as well as reviews for Steel, Curtain, and Bam's Revenge, which I'll also put in the iCard. But just briefly walking through each coaster... Only two are clones, and both even have unique aspects to them. So, Little Phantom, which is a kitty coaster, it's operated with a manual handbrake, which is really sick, and you don't see that very often, and was just kind of a cute little fun ride. And Exterminator, which is their standard reverse on spinning wild mouse, is themed to freaking exterminating rats. It's indoors. So weird, and it's a really fun ride because of that. And then, of course, the six other coasters, which are the most notable ones, they're all custom and, for the most part, very weird and unique. I mean, Skyrocket gets a lot of flack, but I thought that was a really fun coaster. Third best in the park. Got a weird mix of elements like airtime and inversions and strange S-curves that don't do anything. And even when it's stupid, at least it's still very fun and smooth. The three wind coasters I do think are mostly overrated besides a couple of their elements. But they are still really weird and just iconic and classic and... I don't think any other park has three coasters older than 1940. These are all like 20s and 30s wooden coasters. It is crazy and makes it really cool. You know, they got weird ones like, you know, Racers and Mobius Loop. Thunderbolt has its largest drop at the end of the ride. Jack Rabbit's got that ridiculous double down, which is just so insane and wild. And then, of course, the big top two are... Really just fantastic ride. Steel Curtain has the record for most inversions in North America. And it's just a weird coaster overall. Very fitting for Kennywood. And Fam's Revenge is one of the best rides in the world. Has the best night ride I've ever been on. So yeah, overall, this collection is again quality over quantity. Even if the one coasters were a bit underwhelming. And there isn't so much outside of that top three. I think the uniqueness and just the novelty of them all. Especially just the sensational aspects of Fam's Revenge, as well as Steel Curtain being really great, make it still a 4 out of 7, just above average. So before I calculate the overall score, I got two final categories, Pricing, which is out of 4, and Foo, which is out of 3. And I think for pricing, Kennywood is pretty solid. If you're looking for a season pass, the standard one is $86. They have slightly cheaper ones and slightly more expensive ones with less and more perks. Pretty solid stuff. And the tickets, if you buy it on a weekday, right now it's 50 bucks per day. I got mine, it was 40 bucks. I bought the season before over the off season when it was cheap. So you can get deals like that. And for 40 bucks going to the park, especially when the park is free parking, you can also pay a few dollars for preferred parking where it's a bit closer to the park because it's a weird long walk to get into the park where you have to walk under a road. And that's kind of an iconic little thing where you go in the tunnel another part of the weird charm of the park but overall 40 bucks that was a phenomenal deal the deals i saw on the website now didn't look as good so i'm giving it a three out of four and then for food i actually did not eat lunch or any meal at the park because i was kind of getting screwed by some long lines and was just trying to get everything in so the only thing i actually ate at the park were the potato patch fries and i didn't get them with the cheese and the bacon because i'm not into that stuff so i just got the standard fries with malt vinegar and the gravy they were really good but weren't my favorite fries ever i can definitely tell that they're really intended to have the the nacho cheese and the, the bacon on them so 
I can't really speak so much of the food, but I looked on the website and I remember it being pretty standard fare. The facades of the restaurants and the places are really cool. And if you're into like snacks and like classic iconic desserts and Americana, you're going to really love this park for all of that. And you know, the cheesesteaks and all of those different types of treats and whatnot. But like their variety is not the best overall. So I'm giving it a two out of three. So after totaling up all of the different categories, you get 26 out of 40, which divide by four and you get a 6.5 out of 10 for Kennywood on the more objective, well-rounded scale. So above average, but not so great, which is kind of surprising because Kennywood's such a praised park. And honestly, I think this speaks pretty truly to the park in that it has some very significant highs, but also some big deficits and if it's for example theming i don't think it's a big deal because that's not the park's bread and butter but there are other areas that the park could certainly improve upon like operations and as well as the employees so it really is a mix of highs and lows for the park in my personal experience i only went for one day so it is a very hard to rate a park on just one day and of course since then they have gotten rid of some of their great family rides and thrill rides which really made my visit spectacular but nevertheless, even with what they have now and those funky dark rides, Bam's Revenge, Steel Curtain, and just the fountains and all the walking around, just seeing how beautiful the park is and the unique charm of it, I really, really enjoyed my time. And I love when parks kind of converge the old with the new, and Kennywood is one of the best examples of that that I've ever been to. So yeah, it was a great day at the park, despite some crazy lines and just some difficult, you know, dealing with employees and just some good crazy clientele that wasn't the best overall i'm giving the park a 7.5 out of 10 it's one of the better parks i've been to for sure and i highly recommend it if you're anywhere near the area it is one of those parks you got to go to even if it's just for fam's revenge so yeah thank you guys for watching this park review for kennywood i know this was a really long video but took a while to do and i really hope you enjoy these because they are just you know a big project but i think it's really fun to just give an overall look at this park and how good I think it is. I'd love to hear your comments down below on what you think of Kennywood. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this and you want to see more videos from me. I have a lot more coming soon. I got a lot of parks I'm going to this summer and a lot of old park reviews which you can check out on the playlist right here. Thanks for watching. This is Coaster Grace signing off. Goodbye.